Ming, oh, people missed all that funny stuff we just did. We just had a clown show in here. Ming forgot to roll. No, I'm sorry. I ruined everything. No, Ming, you are the show. We were just talking about how my palette knife was crooked and how it was kind of hanging to the... Just leave it alone. Today I'm going to be giving you a little bit, uh, I don't know, I don't know, people don't want me to share this kind of information because there are marketing tricks out there and when it comes to color, there are tons of marketing tricks and it starts really early, really, really early, okay? As young as, I don't know, when do you get Crayola crayons? When you get crayons as a kid, they have interesting names like, I don't know, canary yellow or like blueberry, right? That's, a, that's maybe? Let me know if you have a blueberry Crayola crayon Fire out there. Red. Fire engine red. Yeah. The thing is, as we get older, we should have consistency with our color names, but that's not the case. We have adult versions of Fire Engine Red, as Olivia so kindly um, offered. What are some examples of these colors that don't exactly exist? And when I say that, it's because a lot of colors are named either for their pigment or there's, there's a consistency involved, okay? So, what are some examples of those? Uh, was I holding this? Uh, who cares? Okay. Mamari Blue, Dragon's Blood. Okay, that's kind of, that's a fun sounding name, right? All right. You've got, this is kind of self-serving, Lucas's Lucas Red. I'm guessing you're not going to find that in another brand. All right, similarly, similarly, you've got Windsor Newton's Windsor Blue. Okay, well, all right, so that's, that's interesting. So they have these colors, but, but I get confused. Why, why do they have a Windsor Blue? And another company doesn't have Windsor Blue, besides the obvious. So what's happening? Well, if you look at the range of colors for Windsor Newton, you might notice some, um, some of the usual suspects, I'll call them, are not on the list. For example, phthalo colors, okay? Phthalo colors are not available in, Luke, uh, excuse me, in Windsor Newton Artist Oil colors. That's because they've kind of renamed it. Yeah, they've renamed it Windsor Blue. Why would they rename something, especially a color that is, um, so I guess mainstream because phthalo blue is a pretty popular color. Well, there's a couple reasons. I mean, one, if you are like let's say let's say a student and you have a class list of supplies and you go in there to the store and say, hey, I need a I need a Windsor blue. Well, well where are they going to take you, Ming? Ming, are you paying attention? What? <laughs> okay, I just I just blew no, his I... mind. No, no, no. There's no there's no right answer. It's me. You know, I, I, I'm going to tell you. Okay, Ming says that they're going to take you to the Windsor Newton rack because it's Windsor Blue and they only have it. So it's sort of like if they put phthalo blue on that list, you could be taken to any oil paint, but a lot of times teachers want you to use what they use and companies want you to use their product, of course. Some of you guys out there might say, okay, well, I already knew about this and, and all you have to do is look at the pigment number. And that's true, okay? You can always, and this is how you get around the marketing. For those of you that didn't know, tubes of paint are labeled, and well, this is so small, I don't know if you're going to see this, they're labeled with pigment numbers, okay? So if you zoom in real tight, teeny tiny, you can see peanut butter 15, or actually PB15, which actually stands for pigment blue 15. And pigment blue 15 is phthalo blue. Now, in all fairness to these companies, besides the marketing tricks, some colors are just kind of hard to pronounce. Now, when I say phthalo blue, that is the shortened version of the full word. I can't even, do you know what the full word is? Phthalo Phthalocanopolis, is it Greek? It sounds about right. It's probably not, but it, you, you know it. You, you'll be sure to tell me in the comments below. It's a long freaking word, okay? So Windsor Blue, that's easy. And I'm already, you know, you're already abbreviating it with Phthalo Blue. Plus, it's hard to spell. Have you ever spelled Phthalo? It's, it's, you know, a weird word to spell. It's like here. I just want to make sure I get it right. It looks like Phthalo. I mean, that's phthalo, abbreviated. It's not even the full word. Now, to just, you know, verify this, because, you know, we, we've seen the pigment number, but, you know, hey, I need visual, okay? I've got phthalo blue and, and ultramarine blue, and this is a common test that I'd like to do to show if you've been following our pigment videos, okay, as half of you have, um, you know that phthalo is an extremely tinting color, okay? So it shouldn't take very much to tint this white, where ultramarine does not have as high of a tinting strength. So let me just quickly do this. I don't know why I used all the blue, but this is all, okay, this is all of the ultramarine blue in with all that white. Again, going back to those artist science standards, what is it? ASI. 
ASS, my artist science standards. Okay, we use this. We use this ASS. And with all that blue, and, I, and I'm saying that because I didn't exactly squeeze out the exact same amount, but you know, this is, this is playing with paint here, okay? Is that if I was to go into this phthalo blue now, now remember these are different colors, so it might not be the same shade, but I'm just gonna take a portion of that, okay? Look at that, that is a phthalo. That is a strong tinting color that can power over that titanium white and, and bring up a bright, brilliant blue. Fair enough? No? Okay. Now, those colors that I just you know, demonstrated are what are known as single pigment colors, okay? So there's another reason that there is this sort of lie in there. You might see that some color ranges have 60 colors, some have 70 colors. We've got some companies that claim that there are 200 colors in their range, 200 plus. Technically there are, but they are blends. There are only about 60 to 70 single pigmented colors in, uh, that, that you can possibly make. There's only so many pigments, the rest are blends, okay? So when you blend colors, there might not be a name for that. You don't want to call it titanium white and, you know, cadmium red, that, that's not a good catchy name. So you come up with your own names. Now, this dragon's blood here, you know, it's uh, two pigments, okay? So it says earth tone, uh, PBR, which is uh, pigment brown, um, seven, and quinacridone, PR, pigment red, uh, 200. So that's a blend of two colors. Now, why do they call it dragon's blood? Because that's kind of sexy. I think that's why. I mean, in all seriousness, I think they want to find catchy names. You know, they want to find something that you can remember that, that's memorable. And so dragon's blood is a staple in the Mamari product line. And I remember as a kid taking orders and always hearing, yes, I'd like to do the dragon's blood. And I'm like, ooh, we sell weird shit. But, you know, in all honesty, these color names are just pretend. They don't really exist. They're like leprechauns or, I don't know, Girl Scouts. They're not real. That's what you have to remember. Now, I'm going to take it a little further and say that there are some things, there are some things that they don't put on there, and I don't know why they don't put it on there. I have two tubes, and again, they don't match because this is a little bit of an older packaging. You're going to see here, this is Windsor, so Phalo, Windsor Blue, Green Shade, right? Windsor Blue, Red Shade. But if you look on the tubes, they both say PB, and this is really small, 15. So what, what's the deal with that? Well, we did an artist problem, I guess eight years ago, where I talk about why don't my colors match, okay? And PB15 is the code, eh, eh, is the code, I don't think I meant to put those dots there, so now it looks like PB115. Okay, this is turning into a mess. All right, just scratch that. PB, am I still in the shot? PB 15, okay? We'll eventually get there, Olivia. If you were to actually look and uh, you know, do the research, you'll find that there's actually a PB 15 1, a PB 15 3, and so on. There's actually like 40 of them, like a, a bunch. And the reason that a lot of times your pigments might not match or your colors might not match as we discussed is there are so many pigment options that you get from these pigment distributors. But when Winsor Newton got this, they said, well, we want to have one that biases red and one that biases green. I don't know why they don't have to put the dot dot one dot dot three, but if you want to know kind of more specifically on that, you can just search PB any number or color pigment numbers on, on the Google. I mean, and you can find full listings. There's so much information out there. I don't want you to fall victim to the marketing if you didn't know that. But I also wanted to explain why, why it was in some cases. It's not all a scam, some of it's a scam. But sometimes it's, you know, when they have 200 colors, you know, if you hear a range that has 200 colors, a lot of it is just a color plus white, a color plus more white a color plus even more white. I mean, that is a bunch of different colors and they still have a place. It is impressive when you go into a store and see that huge rack of paint, but you don't necessarily need it. So many of those you can mix yourself, if not all of them, but there is a huge convenience factor if you find something that you like. You know, there are, you know, like, you know, a Charvin, like the, the Blue Lagoon or something, you know, Return to Blue Lagoon, I don't know, other kinds of weird things they have for movies. That might not even be a real color. I think there's something but anyway, um, where was I going with this? So there are infinite color blends. You could blend colors literally to infinity and we could have, you know, we could advertise, you know, the infinity paint line, you know, because they're just, but they're not going to do that. They're not going to mix 
you know, millions and billions, what's the highest number to infinity? This is gonna get confusing. You're not gonna have it because you're never gonna get through every single tube. You're gonna have to do a little mixing on your own, okay? But there are options out there if you want, but it's just a blend of pigments that already exist. So that's the important thing, that's, that's part of the message. Oh, and I should say that Lucas Red is simply a pyrrole red, you know? And how did I figure that out? How did I, how did I figure it out? I just, I just typed in pigment PR254, and guess what? The Google told me what it was. Huh, that's a secret busted, okay? It's another crisis averted. So what other questions do you have about, you know, pigments or color marketing or what have been some experiences you've had where you've been confused, like, hey, I've never heard of this color, why does it exist? Share your stories below. Share what you hate about me. Sometimes that happens. Share what you love about me. You know I love that. And, uh, and yeah, I would love to hear your comments as usual. So I hope that you can see through the marketing and you can see through the tricks and I really hope you can see through me on Instagram at Mike Not Jerry, where I'm gonna continue to post things that hopefully you can see right through. No, that's not good, right? So do you have any further questions about pigment numbers? I have gas. And that's, look, that's not new, okay? We, we usually cut that out. Um, it's, it's my soda. It's my caffeine. I told you to get the IV set up. Just have it intravenously going into, I don't know where that's putting the <laughs> caffeine, but um, you know what I mean. Bing, be professional over there.